Hey guys, how you all doing? Hanging in there? These past couple of weeks have been a little bit crazy, no? <laughs> so uh, the whole social distancing thing, I know it's crazy and a little bit rough, but I am going to use it as an opportunity to just experiment and learn some new skills. So I came across this joint on Pinterest that uh, it was from a bunch of different sources. I don't know who the original maker of this is. And I figured that this would be a fun little joint to experiment with and figure out. I started on SketchUp by laying out three pieces of stock at 60 degree angles to each other. And then I just cut away at all the parts that intersected <laughs> to create the joint. So I don't know what this joint is called, but judging by what's going on here, it seems that there would be lap or half lap somewhere in the name. So three piece half lap, three way half lap, something like that seems appropriate. And it also seems like there are only two steps to making this. The first would be the V shape on the end grain. And the second step would be to cut away at the half lap parts on either side to create the joint. So let's try it out. I prepared three pieces of stock that are the same width and thickness. And I don't think the dimensions matter here at all. Just as long as all the pieces are the same, I think I'll be good. Before making any cuts, I just want to mark out all the layout lines. And the first step is to mark the center on both faces of the boards. And now mark the center on the sides of all the pieces. Now the first cutout, the V shape that's going to be on the end should meet at a 60 degree angle. So I'll go ahead and mark that. Next, I need to mark how far down the half lap is going to go on the piece. And according to the SketchUp drawing, that line is the same length as this angled line from the corner of the piece to the middle of the board. For the dimensions that I'm using, that line is 7 eighths. So I'm going to set my combo square to 7 eighths and mark that onto the sides of the boards. And now once again, using my square with the 60 degree pin in it, I can line it up so that it's lined up with the side marking that I just made and make a line. So now the piece that's going to be cut out is this piece, this whole area over here. So I don't need to make a line on the other side because that side is going to remain. And now I'll flip the piece over onto the other side and do the same thing. Line it up with the mark I made on the side. Pen is much clearer. So here's that first V cut that's going to be removed. And here's the second lap cut that's going to be removed. And when marking this, I just wanted to make sure that this second cut was on the same side on both faces. So this is the right side, and this is also on the right side. So now over to the table saw. If I take the piece and I flip it on its edge, I can just tilt the blade to 30 degrees, and then that would be the correct angle to clear out the waste. And all I need to do this is my miter gauge. Cool, so now two things to figure out here, the blade height and how far away I should leave my stop block. I'm assuming that I want the top of the teeth to be about half the thickness of this material. So I'm just going to set it so that it's a bit lower while I figure out the stop block position. Next, I'll line up the piece with the blade as best as I possibly can, trying to keep it close to the line and I'll move, move my stop block into position and lock it down and make the cut. When you look up close at the piece, you can see that there's a little bit of room there to get closer to the line. And you can also see that because this piece over here is not a sharp point. There's like a little lip there. 
So what I'll do now is make a micro adjustment with my stop. So I will just move it out a hair, loosen up these little knobs, push in this little metal bar so it just goes a tiny little bit amount, lock it down and make another cut. Now that the stop lock is in the correct position, I'm just going to take multiple passes, raising the blade each time just to get it to meet into the corner. Now there's a perfectly clean angled cut in the end over there and the hard part for this cut is over. The hard part is the setup. The angle of the blade is correct, the height is correct, and the stop lock is correct. All I need to do is just now cut the two other pieces. All right, not too bad. So that was actually the easy part. The hard part now is figuring out how to get rid of the waste here on either side. My first thought is to use some hand tools, so I'm gonna go try that out. Not too bad. Now I'll just repeat the same thing on the other side. That's pretty cool, but to make sure that they're both the same depth, I'm gonna use a router plane. While that was fun to do with hand tools, I wanna to see if there's a quicker way by making a jig. So sorry for the noise in the background, my kids are home. Uh, the table saw angle and height is still set up from that initial cut that I made. So I'm going to take a scrap piece here and cut that angle into uh, the bottom here. Now I'm gonna set the blade back to zero and set up the cut so that it will cut just by the tip of that angle. And now we'll just attach these two pieces back together using brad nails. All right, cool. So now I wanna make sure that each cut is going to be exactly the same. So I wanna add some stops so that I could just quickly line up the pieces 
when I'm using this as a template. So I know that this angle here is the perfect size that I need. So I'm just going to line it up on the edge of this MDF. Make sure that it's completely flush against here and lock it down. And I'll line it up on that second angled line that I made to make a stop at the back. All right, time to test it out. So I'll need to put another piece just underneath on the other side just to keep it stable. Line it up. All right, and I'll just keep lowering the bit until it gets to my halfway mark. I'm still going to need to use some hand tools to clean up that little corner there. So before taking off that template, I'm gonna use my marking knife and use the template as a guide for where I'm going to make those cuts. Now I can do the other side. Not bad, not bad at all. Just for fun, I wanna see if I could do this all by hand. So I went and marked everything out and then made some relief channels for my saw using a chisel. And I realized that um, my initial measurements, I measured down here to get this um, measurement, but you don't really need to do that. I could have just started from this corner and extended it down. And that is where that cutout area is supposed to start. So let's see if I could do this. could just cut through like that. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how all the pieces fit. I'd say that is pretty good for my first time. All right, so after the glue dried, I sanded it and cleaned it all up. And it is far from perfect, but I think it's pretty good for my first try. So while that was setting up, I actually cut another set using three different wood species. And this whole thing took me about 20 minutes to do using the router with the template method. And um, yeah, it was pretty simple to do. But the question here is which method did I prefer out of all these? And I guess that would be all of them. So if I was batching out some work where I needed to get this done by a deadline and it needed to be precise, the router with the template would a thousand percent be my choice. 
But if time and precision was not a factor, like during a quarantine, <laughs> uh, hand tools by far, because that was just more enjoyable for me. So this is, these are not the only methods that you can do to make this joint. Actually, while I was doing this, Keith from KJ Sawdust on Instagram was cutting the same joint and he did it a totally different way. So you could check out his Instagram to see another method. And I'm sure that you guys are already thinking about different ways that you can accomplish this as well. So while you are stuck in quarantine or just staying at home and social distancing, you could head on over to woodcraft.com and they will deliver any tools that you need to experiment or hone your skills. So I'm really glad that I use this quarantine as an opportunity to hone my skills and learn some new things. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you on the next one.